go. This isn't technically the pre-lift drive. I've got a couple errands to run first, but may as well, may as well give a, may as well do the little chest day breakdown now, and then really fucking get in the zone in like, I don't know, probably two hours. It's like 4.45 right now. But plan for chest, plan for chest is as normal. Just incline, heavy pressing, and then I think I need to chill out. I've said this a couple times, like, it makes a ton of sense. If I want my upper chest to grow, do more incline work, right? But I think I may have taken it a little bit too far to the point where I'm kind of, um, I mean, how do I even want to say this? It's like I'm almost sacrificing muscular isolation for the purpose of really targeting my upper chest because I've got a bad tendency, which I'm working on, to hunch my shoulders forward in my incline pressing. Not with all pressing, but especially incline. Like some machines, is it's really fucking bad. To the point where I'll finish a set of incline, you know, chest press, and my front delts will be on fire. Like they did a serious amount of work just then. And I'm not trying to hit my front delts. You know, this isn't just a generalized push day, right? This is chest. I'm trying to just hit my upper, but you pretty much hit your whole chest, regardless of what kind of pressing you end up doing. So with some movements like that, I think I'm going to chill out and be a little bit more, um, you know, focused on the actual kind of, well, what I'm trying to say there is I'm trying to make sure that my pressing is as inclined as I can manage, but is still only working my fucking chest. So that's where, I mean, at this gym, there's an incline barbell, like a sort of incline barbell bench setup where the incline is not your typical like 45 degrees, it's closer to like maybe 30 or so. Like it's still an incline and it feels pretty fucking good. So I've been doing a lot of Smith machine. I think I might want to bust out some fucking, some fucking incline barbell today is the first heavy kind of movement. And then after that, I, I've said this the last couple chest days, I've really got pick of the litter with the whole gym because after like, even just two, but it ends up usually being at around three, maybe four sets of heavy pressing. It doesn't necessarily, you know, I'm not necessarily locked in to one specific path of movements for the rest of the lift. I can kind of do whatever I know is going to feel good that specific day. You know, so you know some days you kind of walk in and like, you're extra fucking strong. You can move around a lot of weight. So if I ever feel that, that may make me a little more inclined to do some more heavy pressing. But if I can tell I got totally taxed after just three sets of incline barbell, then I might be a little more lean towards like chilling out on the weight and focusing more on lighter squeezing sets, you know, like doing the chest press with just two plates and really like holding it for a second or doing some more flying you know, squeeze based sort of sets. And that just kind of depends. It's just kind of... <clears throat> that just kind of depends on the day, you know, but when it comes to, uh, when it comes to getting your bench stronger, I see, uh, well, not even, I see, I'll, I'll get this question a couple times. It's like, what should I, I'm, I'm working on my bench. What should I do to try to fucking, you know, bring it up and just overall, as long as all the sets that you do, you fucking go hard, you're going to gain strength. You know, if you take the majority of your sets in your workout to legitimate failure, then that stimulus and that fucking stress you just put your fucking muscle fibers through. <coughs> when you go home and, you know, eat and rest and recover, you're going to come back a touch stronger. You know, you're not going to gain like 10 pounds on your bench in one week, but minor gains on repeat over and over again, they're going to start to add up. And I think the primary fucking stimulator of those gains, size and strength, is the actual fucking intensity. So, I, I mean, I barely ever see it. I, I do, I do see it, but I barely ever see it. Like, actual sets of pressing, be it hammer strength machine, smith machine, whatever. I hardly ever see guys doing pressing sets to real failure. Especially not with, like, barbell, because you, if you want to do legit failure with a barbell, you need to get a spotter. So, I see a lot of sets which, I mean... You could have pushed yourself pretty hard, but if you know you have three more reps left, 
I think that's, that's not enough, you know? So in the scheme of things, I'd say your best bet is to at least get to a point where you fail a rep and you have to some, have somebody pull it off you. But if I've already got a spotter, I don't, I don't want him to just pull that last rep off me. Usually I'm gonna ask him to help me with some assisted reps too, to the point where I'll have him help me with like maybe three or four, depending on how, how strong the guy is, like assisted reps. So not only do I get to, uh, not only do I get to hit failure and not worry about crushing myself, but I get to go to failure and beyond and make that scent way more intense than I could ever do on my own. And you can, you can emulate that sort of added intensity by doing like a drop set, but it's not, it's not exactly the same, you know, like it's not exactly the same as actual assisted, pretty much forced reps. Because those are honestly, those are its own beast. Like the feeling that I get in my biceps when I'm doing like bent over concentration curls and I'm like, I'm assisting myself in the last five reps to the point where as soon as I take my other hand off, I, I can't even hold the dumbbell up. It just immediately fucking falls back down. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, especially to somebody who's not really experienced with it, but you've, you're doing reps but it doesn't actually even feel like you're pushing the weight at all. All you get to feel is a fucking crazy burning sensation and you just kind of force yourself through it. So if you know some guys in your gym who you, uh, who you think are serious enough where they're gonna be able to spot you and give you a good spot, that is gonna improve your training. So that's, that's kind of a benefit of lifting with your dogs. You know, I'm, um, I don't need a crew with me, of course. I'm gonna go hard regardless. But actual assistance in your sets Depending on, I mean, fuck, dude, a spot when you're squatting, that could potentially save you from fucking having to unrack however many plates you just squatted, throw the bar back up, reload the weight on it, you know, so it helps. That's where part of that's just going to come with time. If you go to the same gym for months on end, even if you're a little bit more on the, uh, the socially anxious side of things, you're going to start to get pretty comfortable with these guys that are around you to the point where you can ask them for a little bit of help. And they're not going to mind. You know, that's, that's what they're fucking there for, right? Now, don't, don't ask the same guy for a spot on, like, every set that you do. You know, that might, that might be a little much. Don't pull them away from their workout. But everybody's got to rest for fucking three minutes-ish. You know, two, three minutes. So, they, uh, don't worry. They're not going to hate you if you ask them for a spot. So, that's my, that's my little ending shtick there. But let's fast forward a couple hours. See what that first set of uh, incline pressing ends up being. All right, guess who forgot that um, that gym actually closes at six? Today's Saturday. Totally slipped my mind. So instead of that hardcore gym, you know, you know what? I don't even like the. I don't even like saying it like that. A gym in it, in and of itself is not hardcore. It's about how you use it. It's about the energy you bring to it. So this is going to be a nasty ass chest day, even though I'm in. What some have, you know, referenced as one of the most accepting gyms there is. But you get the gist. Three plates in a 25. Honestly, if I was feeling a little bit more ego liftery, I would slap four plates on here right now. But I've got to remember, I'm feeling extra strong this week, or like these two weeks, because I just reintroduced fucking like hundreds of grams of carbs into my diet. I'm now fully bulked up. I'm not used to lifting this heavy. So even though, you know, muscularly, I could probably move four plates, that's getting into the, I'm redlining it to the point where I'm, uh, I'd be a little nervous of tweakage. Now, over the coming weeks, as I get more exposed to this weight, you know, and maybe next chest day, I do three plates of 25 and a 10 on the Smith machine and gradually expose myself to the weight. I'm not so concerned about that. You know, if you can, if you've done a weight consistently for three weeks or a month, Adding 10 pounds, I wouldn't stress, but suddenly adding like 100 out of nowhere or like 50 or whatever within like a few day period, that can be a little freaky, but let's, uh, let's make this a good one.
Okay. Oh my god. Oh. Holy fuck. Okay. Let's lose the 25 and just do three plates. I lied. One more with three plates and the 25. Let's make it a drop set. Oh, okay. One more set with just three plates. Oh my god. All right, cheeky little three plates to failure. Come on. Probably not another, another drop set. I'm going into this with the intent of making it a straight set. Now, if I do some nasty partials at the end, that's its own thing. Oh. oh, crap. Okay. Let's move on. Not sure what to. Oh. Yeah, this chest press isn't typically enough weight. But after finishing those three sets of heavy Smith machine, this stack is, I mean, it's heavy enough to the point where I almost didn't even do the stack. But I think it's within reason, so this will be a good set. And then I made the seat a little higher than normal. It was like I was saying, I got a tendency to use a lot of front delt. So if I've got the seat way down low, I end up pushing a little bit more upward and it kind of turns it into well, a front delt movement for me. So by putting the seat up a little higher, I mean, I don't know if I can explain it crazy well in like 30 seconds, but I just feel a lot more chest rather than shoulder. So let's get amped up, do a straight set and go from there. If it feels crazy good, I might just sit here for five more sets and that'll be the rest of the workout but probably just a few and then some flies or something. One more, a little lighter. That was a little much. 
That's not over. I'm gonna make it a rest pause, so I'll just take 10 seconds, breathe, do a few more reps. I think that's enough of that. Right, let's go do some flies and that's probably gonna be it. Five sets deep. Yeah, three, even two sets of flies. More than a volume in my mind, especially with how it's fucking <laughs> making my chest feel. But let's, uh, let's move over. Moderate weight. Oh, let me make sure I focus. There we go. Yeah, so moderate weight, 42 and a half. And then these are not, I mean, I, I've never been a fan of like, incline flies like this i mean this is that's just all front belt for me so if i can do flies they're gonna be at least like this flat in front of me but i've really been liking kind of decline based flies i still feel my whole chest and the stretch is so fucking nice plus no front delt so let's uh let's do one of these straight set style and get a little nasty at the end of it if necessary you know the drill one more straight set and then maybe a funky kind of like drop super set and that'll be it all right One more probably just um well we'll find out in 0.1 seconds slightly heavier that was 42 and a half this is now 57 and a half so i'll do some heavy decline ones drop the weight pretty much in half and do 30 pound in front of body flies so it's, i like that contrast of supersets something really heavy and then something lighter squeezing focused all i'm trying to do is really just pump out my chest as much as possible. If I can find a cool song to match. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
down. Gosh. Now for those curious, nobody changing. I, I was just telling them, I'm, I'm not crazy enough to do a shirtless pose down at the Planet Fitness. So right here will suffice. But of course, if there's fucking, you know, somebody actually doing their business, I just have to skip the pose down altogether, at least with the clip. But what was that? Seven sets, eight sets of chest, you know, nothing crazy volume wise. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing the 25 sets I used to do when I was a, a beginner. It's just unnecessary. You know, by the time you've done, I think, eight-ish is a good number. Now, it could, that could bleed into 12. And I've called some workouts at four fucking sets. But I think I'm not aiming for a certain amount of volume. I'm aiming for a baseline overall feeling of fatigueness, muscular destroyedness, and probably at least most noticeable of all fucking pumpedness but let's uh let's run through a few oh my god oh Let's just get the most muscular and fucking scram. So I'll say this. Chest has got to be my fucking favorite muscle group to have pumped up. And not just because of chest. But, like right now, <laughs> it's not even just my chest that's pumped up. It's literally my whole fucking torso. From doing those flies, my biceps came into play a little. They're getting a residual pump. Every set of pressing, as good as I am at chest isolation, triceps are coming into play. Shoulders acting as a stabilizer. They're getting pumped. And of course, the main show of all fucking chest. So honestly, when you're posing down after a good chest day, it's not just a chest pump. You got a full fucking torso pump. So my only concern now is going home, eating a fucking crazy amount of meats, carbs, a reasonable amount of fats, and then at least another half gallon of fucking water with electrolytes. So let's get in the car. You want to know? You want to know something? You want to know something that I did? Boom. Boom. That's what happens when you finish a lift over here. I did it. Which, depending on your, let's just say, time frame of your lifting journey, that is not a bad goal to hit. You know, for somebody who hasn't really worked out yet. They're getting into it a little, you know, they've gone a couple times with their friends. They haven't really gotten into a routine on their own yet. To have gone from not really lifting on the regular to have done like even, even just one good week of like consistent fucking lifts. That is a fucking milestone, man. You know, cause a fucking, now it's, they sound silly. Of course, every cliche sounds cliche, but they're all fucking true. You know, every journey of a thousand miles starts with a teeny step. You know, every lifting journey of a thousand pumps starts with one YouTube search of how to get abs in 30 minutes. You know, so in no way am I discrediting the validity of the, blah, 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 the validity of the accomplishment of going to the gym on a regular basis as a total beginner. Because we've all been there, man. You know. When I started working out, I, I didn't just jump straight into the gym gung-ho, you know, no, uh, no fucking, no care in the world about what anybody else thought of me and what kind of weights I was lifting. The longer you lift, and honestly, the longer you live, the more you kind of realize people don't actually care. You know, it's kind of a, it's, this is not a good way to go about life, you know, really kind of personifying the idea that everyone's looking right at you and everybody has a serious opinion about you and everything every little tiny detail that you're doing uh this you, know, you gotta remember it's your life everything that you do is you're around all the time 
So of course you're going to be hyper fixated on every minute detail of what you do on the regular. But to somebody else who's living his own fucking complete separate journey than you are, the fact that you're doing dumbbell curls and you might not be supinating all the way or whatever, you know, don't, don't sweat it, man, you know? But all I'm trying to say there is actually, well, now I'm kind of translating my, uh, my talk, but if you're kind of a beginner character and you're not really into the gym yet, you may be gone a couple times, you're getting into it, you're, you're looking up workout videos, don't, the more often that you can go, the sooner that you won't be a beginner, and even more importantly, the sooner you won't feel like a beginner. There's a certain level of comfortability, or no, no, there's a certain level of, uh, I guess comfortability is pretty much it, that comes with lifting for long enough, because the more that you're in the gym and the more exposure, and I mean really just the more hours of weightlifting that you can get under your belt, the more normal it's gonna feel for you, you know? And then, as time progresses, you'll begin to actually fucking feel like you're in your element. But no matter what gym I go to now, it's like a fucking safe space for me. You know, I love it. So whether it's a fucking vacation or a trip or a school or whatever, no matter what gym it is, whether I'm a regular or not, I'm like, that is, this is going to be a fun spending of my, you know, an hour and a half, two hours plus chatting, you know, things like that. So if you're still a little antsy about it, it's totally normal. The more that you do it, the more you're going to get used to it, right? I mean, if you asked anybody who fucking loves working on cars, if, if you put him in an auto shop, he's going to feel right at home. You know, if you put a fish in water, he's going to love it. So kind of uh, just something to look forward to if that's you, if you're kind of in the earlier stages of your lifting journey. You're going to feel like a fucking pro in no time. In fucking no time. So in terms of uh, how that chest day went... Honestly, the highlight of it was that incline fucking Smith machine. Because I really was using all... Well, I was really using no front delts. Just all fucking chest. And I think it's because I'm getting better at really retracting my fucking shoulders. I was really pulling them back on those reps of uh, reps of chest. And I think another part of that helped is the fact that I was doing really... Uh, or not really, but reasonably slow and controlled reps. When I really manhandle like as much weight as I can possible, I'm kind of muscling around. Like, sure, I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing solid damage to my chest, but I'm, my triceps are coming into play a ton, front delts for sure. So I'm really trying to hone in, right? It's like I got a magnifying glass and I'm trying to, you know, light a piece of paper on fire. Now that paper is my chest. So if I can really get it at the right fucking focal point, then all that energy that I've got, I guess, kind of internally, I can express purely through my fucking pecs rather than have it spread out into my shoulders and triceps and you know everything else that I I don't want to work so I think I'm I think I'm getting a little smarter with with the pressing and honestly I think eh, like that machine press was cool the pressing sets that I did after the Smith machine but I was feeling a lot of front delts to the point where I'm probably not gonna want to do that machine again the, uh, yeah, that inclined Smith was pretty fucking perfect. Little, little smooth on the, on the knurling though. That's where I'm, uh, that's where I'm a little more picky about that gem. I wish they had chalk floating around, but they gotta maintain their clean aesthetic. That's kind of what they're going for. But play now, go home, eat, sleep, repeat. And tomorrow we'll be back day again. Don't, uh, don't worry, back day is not getting removed from the training split. It is gonna be hit less frequently than everything else though, because relative to my back, my chest and my arms need to come up. At least that's kind of the proportionality that I'm aiming for. So every other back day, I'm gonna kind of use as just an accessory day for other, mus other, other muscles I've been neglecting a little bit. Calves kind of get hit whenever they need hit, but usually that's gonna end up being a calf day and I want some forearm gains this bulk as well. I'm talking like this bottom part. I want this to kind of hang even lower and be a bigger like differential in size from my wrists. These big forearms are fucking cool. Not that I have to tell you that. And not that I need to say that. I think you already know I think that. But 
still in the stage of the bulk where I'm really just, I mean, I really just kind of get to eat. I'm not actually forcing down any food. It's just, you know, breakfast, five things, oatmeal, you know, eight eggs. Well, not more like six eggs and then 25 grams worth of egg whites out of a carton just so I don't have to deal with separating them. It's just, that's kind of ends up being the easiest method because I don't want to do, f like if I did a dozen eggs, that's 60 grams of fats. I don't need 60 grams of fats even in one meal. You know, even though fats from the egg white or the egg yolks, yeah, that's solid. That's a solid source. That's way different than like a fucking, um, you know, like burger fries type shit. But I don't need to be slim and a crazy amount of fats. I'm only trying to get up to like 150 grams per day and not really exceed that. Because anymore, it's, it's not going to do anything for me. If I had a day where I had, you know, 5,000 calories and 3,000 of those calories came from fats, I'm not going to suddenly wake up the next morning extra full and energized. Now, if I had 5,000 calories with most of that coming from carbs, I'm talking like seven, 800 grams of carbs, that's a little bit different because that's actually going to have a direct translation to how full and kind of fucking, well, just carved up I am, you know? So in a bodybuilding context, when I'm trying to bulk up, I'm really trying to maximize the carb intake. But only only barely two weeks in, not even. Yeah, this is not reaching the point of uh, force feeding. And that's something I was a little... Uh, I meant to say in the car earlier, I kind of forgot to. But if you're curious about, like, where should I start with bulking up? How do I... How do I even do it? You know, I don't know. I've been, I hit my protein goal every day. I have a protein shake and some, do some protein bars and I try to have some eggs and some turkey and steaks and everything. How do I really go about bulking up? And for the most part, what I kind of end up seeing is that guys who haven't really had any experience with eating for weight gain specifically, just end up trying to eat as much as they can at any given period. So for breakfast, they might try to eat a fucking massive ass breakfast, like you know, however many eggs they can eat, a bunch of cereal, a bunch of oatmeal, a bunch of uh, a bunch of whatever. You know, at any given moment, they just try to eat a crazy huge breakfast, and then they try to eat a crazy huge lunch and just a crazy huge dinner. And all I end up really seeing is the fact that, you know, sure you may have had like a 1,500 calorie lunch, but you didn't eat again until eight o'clock at night. So I think the guys who are actually going to have a better time trying to bulk up aren't the ones who are spending as much time as they, or as much energy as they can force feeding every meal, like trying to reach like fucking filling your stomach to the brim every meal that you eat. Because you can't really sustain that feeling of food intake, you know? It's more so kind of the primary focus, at least I think, to have evenly dispersed meals throughout the day. Like if you're trying to eat in a weight gaining context, breakfast, lunch, dinner, I don't think that's going to cut it. And I don't think that's the most fucking effective method either. Now, I think something closer to the lines of like breakfast, brunch, lunch, second lunch, early dinner, late dinner, like a six meal kind of day makes a lot more sense. Because for you to try to eat a thousand calorie meals four times a day, uh, especially for kind of somebody who's not like, like when you get up in the 250 range, it's not as crazy. But like if you're a 180 pound dude, 190 pound dude trying to gain weight, thousand calorie meals hits you fucking hard, you know? Whereas if you tried to aim more for 600, even 500 calorie meals and spread those out throughout the whole day, it's going to be easier to fucking get down. Because, I mean, I've seen it myself, you know, for myself. When I try to eat a crazy huge fucking breakfast, you know, bowl of cereal, four pieces of toast, butter on everything, a bagel, eggs, pro or everything, I I'm not fucking hungry for another four hours because I just totally maxed out my fucking digestive system to the point where it's telling me, dude, you don't need to eat anymore. You just ate a crazy fucking amount. Like, eating to uncomfortability, it kind of gets hyped up in a way. You know, like when people kind of, uh, when guys say they're bulking hard, you know, like, dude, every meal I eat, I'm force feeding. That doesn't mean anything if after your entire day of eating, you're not in a surplus. So, sure, if you do three massive meals, but you're not gaining any weight, then all that means is you're eating really big meals 
and like condensing your calorie intake during these three points during the day, but you're not actually eating enough to grow. The feeling of being full, like if I were to sit this morning and do like a crazy massive, like even a 3000 calorie breakfast, like to the point where like I eat so much food, I feel sick. Somebody who's not really initiated might think like, oh yeah, I'm bulking hard right now. But then if you like eat jack shit for the rest of the day, you know, that's not the point. The point is hitting a calorie surplus evenly throughout the entire day. So the way I kind of look at that is that adds up to fucking, you know, six, 700 calorie meals evenly spread out. So at no point do I ever feel like insanely fucking full. I'm just kind of constantly in a fed state. And don't forget, your body kind of likes consistency. Anything too crazy and wild out of the blue, it's going to try to fight you on it. So if you're trying to suddenly now increase your calorie intake from like, let's say you've been eating 2,000 calories per day, that's your maintenance. And now out of the blue, you want to make that 3,000, it's probably not going to be in your best interest to try to suddenly have a crazy massive meal to make up for that calorie intake. It'd be better to kind of ease into it and spread those calories out throughout the day. So that's something I'm uh, I'm getting a little bit more a little bit more closely under you know I've developed a little bit of a better understanding about that, at least for me. So easing into this bulk, easing into this weight gaining period, and gradually increasing my calorie intake as time progresses and my weight progresses. Frankly, I'm starting to think two eighty might be a little bit too light of a goal. <laughs> but that's still record-breaking territory, at least personal record-breaking territory. So my real kind of bulking goal is just get as heavy as I can. As long as my weight is going up, I'm going to keep bulking. And then once I've reached a weight where I'm now no longer gaining anything and I'm just maintaining this weight that I've you know, built myself up to, then that's my cue to say, all right, I'm not going to be able to manage any more food. Now is a good time to start dieting down. But until that happens, I want the scale to keep fucking feeding me higher and higher numbers. Right? I'm buying low, and I'm not selling until the fucking peak. So that's uh, that's my shtick there. Solid P-Fit chest day. Back tomorrow. Cardio in the morning, as always. So I hope uh, I hope you take that to heart. I hope you take the cardio part to heart. I know the majority of you aren't, but some of you. I know some of you guys. Maybe even right now, the switch is about to flip in your mind where you're like, fuck, maybe I should do my cardio tomorrow morning. All right. That could be the beginning of a future Mr. Olympia journey. Not saying that's likely, but it is possible. And cardio would be a good step in that direction. But that's all I got. So I'll see you tomorrow.